Gallimera, Gallimera, Gallimera. Good morning, good morning, good morning from a rather wet and miserable Zakynthos today. Uh, I'm not even going to walk down the stairs. Uh, sorry for my late uh, come online at the moment. Uh, been a busy, been a busy morning. Had to take one of our little cats to the uh, vet this morning to have him neutered. Little Herbert is going in for his little operation, bless him. So uh, we've been out this morning doing that. Uh, I've also been quickly rewriting some of the news this morning. I'll, I'll bring you some more details on that as and when uh, I get started. But that, anyway, that's the day today. Absolutely miserable, chucking it down with rain. I'm sure you can see that. So wherever you are in the, in, in the world, <laughs> this is what it's like here at the moment. And, uh, oh, it, it's horrible today. It really is. And looking just on the floor, all van by the balcony, I've had to move everything back, all right, uh, including my, uh, my laptop there. So I'm right the way over. And it is a bit nippy as well. I've got to be honest. It is rather cold as well. Right, anyway, let's, uh, let's crack on with the news for today as to what's going on. Big shout out to Heather Nash, who's tuning in at the moment. Also got to say hello to Wiggy as well. Um, Wiggy Wynn Stanley over there in Cyprus. He's phoned me this morning, so nice to talk to you, fella. And uh, he's uh, getting better. He's uh, been walking around the block when he's allowed out, because uh, as you might remember, Wiggy had a pacemaker fitted, and he reports to me. And the weather over there at the moment not much better than what it is here at the moment today. It's blessing. Anyway, um, here is the news, and quite a lot of news as well for you. And we've got some happy news as well as some bad news as well for you. Anyway, 16th of January, 2021, it's Saturday, day 71 of the lockdown, and uh, COVID stats in the last 24 hours. Right, in the last 24 hours, there's been uh, 610 new infections recorded, which is up from yesterday, where we had 559, uh, bringing the grand total at the moment since the pandemic started, 47,860, of which 52.1% are male. Now, uh, 25... Uh, infections were identified at entries into the country and i'm afraid that is up from yesterday where we only had four all right so that's not looking good there now as it goes to infections no um new infections here on zakynthos which is good news for us however corfu has had one case uh, reported and just to remind you zakynthos at the moment since the beginning of the year We've only had four positive cases on the island uh, for 2021. So let's hope it stays like that at the moment. Unfortunately, deaths are up on yesterday, but not by a lot. Uh, up by just one to 34 from 33 the day before. The average age of those people, 79 years of age, 95.4% of them having underlying health problems or were over the age of 70. And the gender of the fatalities at the moment, uh, 3,203 male and uh, 2,218 female. So unfortunately, um, our condolences to those people who have lost family at this time and friends. Anyway, um, critical cases, very important thing to look at. Now, they are down the critical cases, which is a bit of good news. At the moment, there's 319 people in ICUs across Greece, um, down from yesterday's 328. Uh, 3,203 of them are male and 2,218 are female. Now, the average age of critical patients is 69 years of age. 88.1% uh, of those have underlying health issues or are over the age of 70. So therefore, um, at least the ICU numbers are going down as well. Now, quite a little bit interesting news. Uh, the European Commission uh, has voiced its interest into a concept uh, proposed by the Greek Prime Minister, Mr. Matsotakis, uh, for a vaccination certificate. But they would like to see a European vaccination certificate to help open up the travel uh, market. But at the moment, looking at what's going on in England, uh, travel to the UK at the moment seems to be off the cards. But it, it, it's a start anyway, and uh, it's an idea that's been generated by Greece. Now, the big news for Greece at the moment is shops are being allowed to reopen on Monday. That's the 18th. Uh, with an optional opening on a Sunday up until the 24th of January. However, with the restrictions on the number of customers being allowed into the stores. So at least we're getting the shops reopened here in Zakynthos. I'm so pleased about that. Um, in our area, uh, it's going to be good. Now, there are restrictions on, on the shopping outlets and what they're allowed to do. At the moment, retail outlets, which are up to 100 square meters in size, are only allowing four customers in at any one time. 
For stores that are over 100 square meters, one person is allowed in per 25 square meters of floor space, all right, of actual sales area. Now, within malls, which we don't really have here, discount villages, which we don't have here, and discount outlets, the maximum number of customers allowed in is one customer per 25 square meters of sales floor. And a distance of two meters must be observed between customers at checkouts and information desks, which we're quite used to anyway with the, the way the supermarkets have been run. But the main thing is, is that retail shops are open. Uh, the other, other than the retail shops that are allowed to be open, uh, hairdressers and beauty salons, they can also open as well. But again, they're on a strict appointment basis as well. Now, in highly infectious areas, uh, we're talking Attica, Thessaloniki and areas like that, retail outlets will only be allowed to offer the click and collect service all right that is all they're allowed to do so again uh, if you live in attica or athens because i know we have uh, viewers in from all over greece watching uh, you uh, i'm afraid are still technically not allowed uh, to go and get stuff out of the shop very easily uh, you've got to rely on the old click and collect all right so again now uh, also as well what will be reopening as well Cateo will be reopening that's the MOT for those people who don't know what that is uh, but they're going to be operating again by appointment only and you can make that either by phone or online and those businesses like the hairdressers and everybody else must maintain a strict list of appointments at the start of each day which can be checked by the authorities at any time all right uh, the nationwide curfew for us is still in is still in process, and don't forget that curfew starts at uh, nine o'clock in the uh, sorry nine o'clock at night and goes on through till five o'clock in the morning. Anyway, the government has also doubled the fines as well for anyone disregarding the rules. Again, naughty schoolboy mode coming in here. You break the rules, you'll get punished very hard. So once again, don't forget to book out. Uh, make sure that you have booked out correctly on your phone. If you're somebody who has to travel to work, make sure that your employer has given you the proper paperwork. And remember that during lockdown at night when the curfew is on, you're only allowed out of your house uh, basically for a medical emergencies only, all right? And I would think now that the um, fines have been doubled, uh, the police will be out. And also, uh, for anybody interested in uh, the ban on hunting and fishing, uh, that is going to be staying in place as well for the foreseeable future. So anyway, so that's what's uh, uh, happening in the regards of the reopening on Monday. We can get back and do a bit of normal shopping here on Zakynthos and also in areas that are deemed a low risk at the moment, which I think is a positive step forward. And I think there'll be a lot of businesses here breathing a little bit of a sigh of relief. It'll be interesting to see if people have got any money at the moment to be able to go out and buy stuff. I know the first thing I want to do, get to Jumbo and get a new squeegee to do the balcony because I broke the old one during the lockdown. Oh, things you look forward to. Anyway, um, another interesting story has uh, come up as well. Now, this is being reported in the local Zakynthos press. I'll let you have a think about this. Um, and this is what's been reported here in Zakynthos in the Amira newspaper. Now, the local press here in Zakynthos have reported a story that at least 23 people who were vaccinated against coronavirus have died in Norway. And this is according to the Norwegian National Medicines Agency. Now, the chief physician, uh, Zygmunt Horitu, uh, said we have been informed of 23 fatalities after the vaccination. At the moment, 13 of them are being examined. It also mentioned that in the announcement, these data may indicate that the common vaccine-induced symptoms such as fever, nausea, can lead to the death of some elderly people with poor health. And also doing some further research on that story, all these people were very, very old and also had underlying health conditions as well. Now, the vaccination with the vaccine of the American company Pfizer and the German uh, BioNTech started in Norway on December the 27th, 2020. 
the first to be vaccinated were the elderly living in nursing homes in Oslo. And according to the APE and the MPE, at the beginning of the year, it became known that three people who lived in different areas who had been vaccinated died. However, these uh, their deaths may not be related to the vaccination and these cases are being investigated. And at the moment, a total of um, I was quite surprised at how low the number was that uh, 21,000 people have been vaccinated with the Pfizer Biotechnic vaccine in Norway so far. Anyway, on January the 12th, uh, Norway began receiving vaccines from the American pharmaceutical company Moderna. And uh, we'll just keep an eye on that little story. But uh, but don't let that sway you in your decision whether you want to have the vaccine or not. Uh, It's just interesting to hear that, yes, there are been some negative reports regarding the vaccines that are being given out at the moment. Anyway, uh, once again, going back to the police here, Greek police have confirmed here in the Ionian about violations, um, 17 in Corfu, uh, 6 in Zakynthos, uh, 4 in Kefalonia and 4 in Lefkada uh, for breaking movement restrictions and fines of €300 Euros were imposed for all those people. So once again, please bear in mind, make sure that you book out uh, when you go out. Also, as well, in the same context, there were 12 violations uh, in Corfu. There were two violations in Zakynthos and one in Lefkada and one in Catalonia for not wearing masks as well. Police caught people without wearing masks. And again, they were also fined at 300 euros for that as well. Anyway, um, another interesting local story, which is causing a little bit of a, a ripple at the moment. Not Nothing related with COVID. But anyway, a uh, 40-year-old foreigner uh, who was found in possession of a large amount of money, which according to Zakynthos police authorities came from the theft of a hotel that took place in Kalamaki. Anyway, the man was re- released on restrictive uh, terms after his apology to the court a few days ago. Now, this case occupied the uh, Zakynthos Police Department for a long time, uh, specifically over the Christmas Eve period, when on uh, when in, on uh, on Christmas Eve in Kalamaki, on the Laganus Kalamaki Road, which is a horrible road, I've got to be honest, um, a police car was located without a driver or a passenger parked, and it was parked in the middle of the road. Anyway, police found a large amount of cash in the car, which exceeded €20,000. Uh, what caused special interest was that the amount had been divided into tens and 20 euro notes and they all smelled of mold yeah anyway the investigation by the police led to the location of the driver of the car who according to the information was an old acquaintance of the authorities so obviously they knew him all right and in the past he had been convicted for robberies against elderly people on the island which is not good all right anyway the 40 year old foreigner uh, has been deported from Clorilla, had returned to Zakynthos illegally. So in other ways, he found his way back onto the island. Although he initially denied any involvement in the theft, the authorities appear to have linked the amount of money found in his car to the theft that took place some time ago in a hotel in Kalamaki. Now, the owner of the hotel was absent for a long time abroad, and when returning to Zakynthos, he found that the money that he kept hidden in the loft of his hotel had disappeared. So that's obviously where the smell of the mould may have come from. Anyway... As written in the press, this strange case is expected to go before the courts. And in the meantime, the 40-year-old is called to report to the police every 15 days. Anyway, so and finally, a bit of good news, all right? Uh, Greek athlete George uh, Kostiponis uh, broke the Greek, uh, sorry, broke the Guinness Book of World Records for the most hand-released push-ups in one minute by compete by completing an outstanding 64 push-ups in one minute uh, in December. Anyway, it takes a bit of time for them to be able to analyse everything to give him the record. 
And they've just said, yeah, you managed to do it. And not only that, he actually managed to beat his previous world record, which was 58 hand release push ups in one minute um, by uh, by obviously six repetitions. So well done to him. And in fact, uh, Kostopanis George actually hails from Heraklion in Crete. He'd actually seriously injured his right arm after only a few months before breaking a previous record, making the accomplishment even more impressive. And you can actually watch that online. I'll put a link in at the bottom of this. You can actually watch it. Maybe it's something you might want to try practice with the lockdown. How many push-ups can you do in the lockdown? You never know. Uh, you could end up breaking the world record, all right? And uh, a hand-release push-up basically is a push-up where you just slightly raise your hand as you push up uh, on the push-up. No, you don't keep your hand on the floor flat, but you just raise it slightly. I've got to admit, he raises it ever so slightly. It's not a massive great raise, but again, very impressive to watch and good on him. Uh, a bit of positivity coming out uh, during the lockdown. Um, also, I've just got to quickly reaffirm the residency permit thing. The residency permit, I, I do apologise to lovely Heather Harvey Nash. She's going this morning for the next phase of getting her permit. Uh, she was one of those people who was told to come back very quickly. In fact, Heather Harvey Green is watching at the moment. Lovely to have you tuning in. Just be aware, um, once you've got all the documentation that uh, Spiro has asked you to bring in after your first visit to see him in his office. He will then book you probably for an appointment then to go to have your fingerprints taken. Now, Heather, when she went the other day, because I was quite shocked at how quickly she actually uh, got this second appointment to go back. And uh, when she got there, she brought all the documentation that she wanted. But Spiro then said to her, right, I'm going to book you in now for today, Saturday, to go and have your fingerprints taken. Uh, she was a little bit uh, unsure about what was going on in that regards as to she thought she was going to get the card or the card would then be processed and then sent off. So it looks like maybe because of working conditions within the actual um, uh, in the actual um, uh, police station, uh, you when you go back on your second visit after your first one where you are told what to bring, he will then book you in for the next phase, which is then for the fingerprint taking and the next move of getting the biometric. He, I think what it is, he just wants to see that you've got all the paperwork, you've paid your money, uh, there's nothing outstanding that he then requires and then from that moment, it then moves to taking the fingerprints and that is obviously done with a separate department within the police station. So uh, again, thanks for that uh, little heads up, Heather. Um, and also you're going to have to wait then, obviously, for the biometric uh, residency permit to be created and then that will obviously be sent back here and I would, wouldn't uh, be too surprised. Uh, you'll then have to go back within a certain period of time then to collect the card itself uh, because it is such an important uh, document. So again, thank Thanks for that little bit of information on that. Jane and I are going on Monday. We've got all the little bits of paperwork that he asked extra. And we'll find out again on Monday once we hand all that paperwork in, uh, whether we will then have to report back again, maybe at another time to actually give our fingerprints, etc., cetera, et cetera, uh, for, for that as well. So thank you for that bit of a heads up there uh, from uh, the lovely Heather Harvey. Right, let's have a quick look who's tuning in at the moment. Got quite a few people tuning in. Heather Nash is looking in. Nice to see you, Heather. Carol Davis is looking in as well. Uh, Heather Nash says, morning, Ginge. Oh, my God, big difference from to your weather. Yes, a big difference indeed. Uh, more real weather, shall we say. Uh, Graham Bint in Australia is tuning in as well. Lovely to have you looking in, old buddy. Uh, Rap Ridge, mate, as well. Uh, Steve Hodgson is also tuning in there from County Durham. He says, good morning, Ginge. Nice to see you, Steve. Uh, also, Caroline Davis says, good morning from a cold Wolverhampton. Yeah, uh, from Jane and Dave. Thank you as well. Uh, my old mate, Mark Varney, is also watching as well. Nice to see you as well here, sir. John Stolwell is watching. Skin Johnson. Hello, Skin. Nice to see you. I've seen you in ages. He says, morning, Ginge, from Skin and Faye. Uh, they were, were being regulars to the island. Lovely to see you looking in. Carol Walker also watching in as well. Sid James, <laughs> he's watching as well. And Andrew.
through the fridge, Watkins, over there in probably a very sunny uh, Wales at the moment. Nice to see you tuning in, mate. Um, Mark Stewart is watching as well. Um, oh, here we go. Um, morning, Gins. Just to let you know that they have done a U-turn on the fine. It's still 300 euro. It was on... Uh, it's still 300 euros was on the news last night cheers for that howard i've got to be honest i was a bit skeptical about this uh, 500 euro and the u-turn on it uh because i know in previous experience people don't work that fast here when things are getting changed but i'll keep that in mind and if that is correct cheers for that fella but uh err on the side of it can only get worse all right <laughs> That if they can get away charging 500 euros, trust me, they've got a lot of vaccine to pay for and it might be a quick way of paying for it by fining you. But thanks for that bit of information as well. Andy Thompson is uh, watching too. Nice to have you tuning in. Uh, Steve Hodgson is also watching in. <laughs> he says, I called Ginge. <laughs> Thank you for that, Steve. Uh, uh, Stephen Snellgrove is watching as well. Kim Senior is watching. Paul Green is watching. Nice to see you there. Uh, and also, uh, Aneta uh, Christofalo, I think that's how you pronounce that. That's obviously a Swedish name. Nice to have you tuning in as well, all the way from Sweden. I bet it's a lot colder there than it is here. Anyway, Ashley Duncan is watching as well. Charles Ballantyne, Chick Ballantyne, nice to see you. Heather Harvey Green is watching. Thank you for tuning in, and thank you for that heads up on the uh, um, on the um, on the uh, biometric card. We're yet to do that on Monday, uh, the second phase. Anyway, Ian Daly's watching as well. Uh, Anthony Wales, uh, Tony Wales over there in Spain is watching. Nice to see you looking in, fella. Uh, Janie McFarlane is also tuning in. Billy Brotherston, I know your name, is watching as well. Nice to see you there, Rap Reg buddy. Uh, Anthony Westlake is watching too. Barry Baxter is watching. Matthew Long is watching. Malcolm Brown is watching as well. Bob Cave in Oxford. How is it there, mate? Oh, it's windy at the moment. He says, windy in Oxford, Sir Jane. Uh, Ginge, is it cold as well? Uh, Paul Green says, morning, Ginger. Thank you. Uh, Heather Harvey Green, morning, Ginger. Heather Harvey, hi. Anyway, thanks for that, guys. Right, um, I've got to just talk about yesterday's broadcast. Again, this glitch came up again. We were one hour into the show. The music, I, we've got to be honest, was really good. Um, I've, I'm At the moment, I spent till maybe one o'clock in the morning going through all my systems again, trying to figure out what this error is that I keep getting. Um, I'm going to have another bash again today, just do a little uh, test broadcast again, see how it goes. Uh, the problem seems to occur when I'm searching for music from uh, people. Uh, people, it always seems to be when, no no disrespect, Sam Curtis, when you start asking for stuff, that's when it starts to glitch, all right? Uh, but anyway, I'm going to do maybe a bit of a test broadcast this afternoon because the weather's so miserable. There's nothing really to do. Ali, I'm going to do a test broadcast this afternoon. Uh, you want to put some requests in at the bottom for me, little test broadcast this afternoon, by all means do so. Uh, but... Um, I really want to get this licked at the moment because I've got two radio stations at the moment who want to start taking my uh, show and I really want to make sure that it, it, things are, are easy for them to be able to take that show without any problems. So it's important that I go online again and broadcast and try and lick this little niggly little error that's going on. And also thank you to somebody in Florida uh, sent me a message via YouTube um, saying about... Um, People who are watching my broadcasts, uh, I'm talking my podcasts now, on YouTube are not getting notification bells to say that the broadcast is taking place. So once again, if you like and subscribe, can you please make sure that you click the bell if you want to get a notification, because YouTube, it seems, are cutting some of even my broadcasts are being cut at the moment. And also as well, he's given me an alternative location as well in which to repost my broadcasts as well uh, if the uh, powers that be seem to think that what I'm telling you is kind of a risk all right so uh, again um, I'm going to look into that and thank you to uh, Les, uh, Les John Paul uh, his name is a uh, guy in Florida not really sure who he is to be quite honest but nice to, uh, that somebody that I don't know a complete stranger is finding the show uh, obviously enjoying what I'm saying and is obviously um, looking out for me best interest so thank you for that I appreciate that got to say a quick hello to Maureen Elves 
just around the corner. I hope you guys are doing all right with everything that's going on. Philip Ellis is also there. Also, my old mate Dave Burns, DJ from Rescues Club. Uh, nice to have you looking in. Uh, and I, I keep apologising for this bloody feed on YouTube, uh, on on the on the internet. Uh, it's not able to go out nice and smoothly, and there's all sorts of issues. But anyway. Hopefully, uh, Greece will improve its internet at some point with all these deals with Amazon and Google and uh, and Microsoft that we might get better internet out of it all. Anyway, I'm burbling now. I've got to go make some breakfast. You stay safe. Uh, please keep uh, dropping me messages. I love it. Uh, and also your feelings on what's going on. I love to hear your comments about what's happening and also about what's happening where you are in the world. I know talking to um, old Wiggy today about Cyprus. Cyprus are on a, on a strict lockdown as well. Um, and it seems a lot of places are going into even stricter lockdowns. And I've got to be honest, when I look at the, the news for the UK, I don't even want to go there. It just, uh, as in reading the news, it's just so depressing, so um, frustrating as well. Uh, because again, um, we've got all this to pay for once it technically is over. And when will it be over? But anyway, we're still technically in lockdown now. Twenty uh, fourth, uh, or at the, till the end of next week at least, uh, we'll see where we stand as to uh, the way forward. Let's just pray that um, our season is not going to be affected at the moment as well, and that things will get back to some remnants of normality and people can still come on a holiday, and that will keep us turning and burning. Anyway, that's it from me. I better go. Thank you for all the support, and I will see you again soon, all right? Ta-ra.